All right, with the Brisbane International draw officially out, we're going to the men's side of things. This is an ATP 250 event, so one of the smaller events, but it has massive names, including Rafa Nadal, who we'll talk about in a second. But let's go see who is not playing this event because some players have pulled out. All right, so only three withdrawals for this one, and Giron, he's pulled out. Nishioka also pulled out, and Opelka have all pulled out of this one. So no major names there but uh, some definitely recognizable names that have pulled out of this one. All right, let's go to the top of the draw, and you've got eight seeds in this one. Nobody gets a buy in the first round, so very dangerous from the start. You've got Runa, number one seed. He takes on Purcell in the first round. Very dangerous match for Holger Runa, because Purcell can do some things, and he's very awkward because he's a bit of a serve volley, a bit of a throwback player, so could be really fun to watch that first round. Uh, winner of that will take on either Van Aish or Shevchenko in the second round, so a couple of young guys going at it in that first round. Then you got Wolf taking on a qualifier. Winner of that will take on either Hanfman or the number five seed Quarter in the second round. And of course, Quarter had such a great time in Australia last year. He made the final of Adelaide, almost beat Djokovic, also made a great run at the Australian Open. So Quarter in Australia, watch out. And of course, his dad did well here 20 years ago. So then you've got Shelton, the number three seed. He takes on Safulin. That is tough. Safulin, very dangerous. Beat Alcaraz at the end of last season. Of course, we all know Shelton. He's going to try and hang up the phone on Safulin, but Safulin's very dangerous. Could be a blockbuster just like that Runa Purcell match. Winner of that will take on either Popper and O'Connell in the second round. Then you've got Arnaldi taking on Fucevic. Winner of that will take on either a qualifier or the number six seed Baez in the second round. Interesting draw. Probably the toughest half of the draw is the top half because Shelton, Korda, Runa, probably the three hardest, well, three of the hardest seeds, and they're all in the top half. Uh, of course, you don't see Rafa there. We'll get to him in a second. He's not in the top half, of course. But, you know, Purcell's a dangerous unseated player. Safulin's dangerous. Uh, Poprin can have his time as well. Um, Alnaldi, you know, he's a good young player coming through, like I mentioned with Van Aish and Shevchenko. So this section of the draw, uh, the top half, very, very tricky. And it could be interesting with the first week of the season. Everyone's back. Everyone's fresh. We'll see who gets through. Bottom half of the draw now. We've got the number eight seed, Karatev. He takes on Kubla in the first round. Winner of that will take on either a qualifier or Rafa Nadal. He's back. He's a wild card. I don't think we've seen him be a wild card or even unseated at a tournament for like 20 years. So Rafa's back and he's unseated for the first time in forever. Uh, could play Karatev in the second round. Always really fun. Then you've got Thompson taking on Vukic. Winner of that will take on either another qualifier or on Bear, the fourth seed in the second round. Then you've got the seventh seed, Echeverry. He takes on a qualifier. Winner of that takes on either Kokonakis or Hichikata. All the Australians are playing each other. That seems fair. Then you've got a qualifier taking on Altmaier. Winner of that will take on another blockbuster. Murray taking on the number two seed, Dimitrov. Dimitrov's been good. Murray just can't take a trick. Gets bad draws every time. Rafa gets qualifiers in his comeback. Murray gets the number two seed. Uh, in every other draw. I mean, so unlucky, Murray. But look, this section is a little better. I think Rafa's probably got a little lucky with the section of the draw because he could have been with Quarter and, and, and up the top with Shelton and, and Runa. He's down the bottom with Karatsev, who can be good, but also, you know, he's very hit and miss. Uh, Umber has been good lately, you know, end of the season well. is dangerous. But as long as he doesn't get a terrible qualifier like Dominic Team, for example, who's in the qualies, he might be able to avoid... Some bad... Uh, he might be able to make the semis if uh, and played maybe Dimitrov if we're basing it on form. So, very interesting section. Rafa's been blessed with a, a nice draw unless the qualities come out and it turns out to be maybe Dominic team and that could be a little awkward. But I think Rafa's going to be pretty happy with that. It's a pretty manageable draw if Rafa's still as good as he was when he left the game uh, 12 months ago. But... Let me know down in the comments below who you think is going to win this event. I think the top half of the draw is where the winner is going to come from. It would be cool to see Dimitrov win, though. He's been really good with no trophies to show for it. Made a final uh, in Paris at the end of last year. He's beaten guys like Alcaraz and Medvedev in the last, you know, three, four months. Has nothing to show for it, though. No trophies, just a bunch of runner-up trophies. So it'd be cool to see him get a win. He did win this tournament, Dimitrov, as well, back uh, a few years back. But, um, I mean, maybe maybe Runa, maybe Shelton, maybe Korda. You know, those guys are probably the favorites up the top uh, to make the final. One of those guys makes the final. But Rafa's back. And he's got a nice draw. We just got to find out who he's going to play in the qualifiers or who he's going to play as a qualifier in that first round matchup. But Rafa's back. Finally, he's back.